Okay, g'day all, welcome to another video. So I just recorded this, but I think it's too it's too long, it's too boring, so uh, I'll do it again and, and hopefully do it quicker. Uh, largely ignoring the slides, so I made all of these slides, but they're just too long, I don't know. Um, this video is on CUDA inline PTX, so this is just a general introduction and it's really simple, so I didn't want to make a 20 minute video, yeah, just a short one. We'll flick through the slides at the end, I think, but yeah, this will mostly just be coding. Uh, okay, so this is a, a new um, Visual Studio project, C++ project, and we're going to talk about PTX. So PTX is the uh, assembly language of CUDA enabled GPUs. So the first thing that you want to do is install CUDA. I think CUDA 8 is out now, but I'm using CUDA 7, so I'll just um, put the build customization for that on. We'll click OK. Uh, we'll come up to project and we'll include CUDA.lib. Uh, configuration properties and linker and input. We've been through all of this before, so if I'm going too quickly here, maybe you want to watch some of the other CUDA videos. Uh, CUDART.lib, we click apply and OK. Alright, now I'll add my CU file, main.CU. Uh, do remember that you've got to put a .CU extension there so that the NVCC compiler gets the file before uh, Microsoft C compiler. CUDA.h and include CUDA runtime.h. I think the only one that you actually need is um, CUDA.h. Yeah, you don't need the runtime, but I found that um, if you include a couple of other headers, sometimes you can get Visual Studio to underline less things in your code. So Visual Studio doesn't understand the syntax of CUDA. It underlines everything. Uh, but what we're going to do today is we're going to have um, the GPU add together some values using its own assembly language. So I'll just use um, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And what we might do is uh, add 1 and 2 together. Actually, I might. No, we'll leave them where they are. D underscore I. Okay, so with the, we've got to copy the uh, array from memory over to the device. So we do that with the CUDA malloc. Whoops, size of int and times 3. And CUDA mem copy. Uh, D underscore I is the destination. I is the source. Size of int times 3 is the size. And CUDA mem copy um, host to device. That's it. And then we'll call our kernel. So that's just going to be some kernel. Some, ker some kernel. We'll just use one thread and one block. Uh, D underscore I. So this is a terrible waste of the GPU. We're just going to use one thread, but yeah, it should do the trick. And up here we'll make our kernel. So it's going to be global and void some kernel and int star a double r just like that and once we've run our kernel we want to copy that back to the host so that just means we swap the source parameter with the uh, output parameter that's all the same but the memory copy kind is device to host and then we'll call CUDA free on D underscore I, we'll see out the result. The result is I handle. Okay, so all of that we've been through before. All we're doing is copying the I array over to the device's RAM using CUDA malloc and CUDA mem copy. Then we're calling a kernel. Whoa. <laughs> and at the moment, the kernel doesn't do anything. And straight after that, we copy the result of that kernel back to the I array and free the device's RAM and see out the result. So at the moment we should have uh, zero in I, um, element number zero, since the device is not actually doing anything, but we'll, uh, we'll get it to do something in just a second. Okay, there we go. The result is zero. All right, so let's get the uh, device to actually do something with PTX. So the first thing that you need in order to run inline PTX is the ASM keyword. And you follow this by a list of statements. Um, I'm just going to use add u32, which is uh, or s32. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which one you do. They're both the same. Um, percent zero, percent whoops, percent one, and percent two. 
Okay, so that's a PTX instruction just there. That's the PTX instruction to add signed 32-bit integers, and it takes three parameters. Um, an output, which is percent zero, or register number zero. The percent just here means register. And percent one and percent two are inputs. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna add register one and register two, and write the result to register zero. No. Okay, then you specify your parameters to your PTX block. So you do that with a colon, first of all, and the outputs. So the output comes first, and then you specify the input. The way that you specify them is with um, inverted commas and a symbol just here. So we'll look at what these symbols can be in just a moment. Uh, but the equals just here means we want to be able to write to this uh, particular parameter. And the R just here means a 32-bit integer. So it doesn't matter if it's signed or unsigned, the R just means a 32-bit integer. And we'll use a double R zero for that integer. We follow that with um, whatever variable we want to use. And then after you've specified your inputs, you specify your outputs. So the outputs use pretty much the same symbols, except they don't have equals beside them. Yeah, because we don't want to write to these values, we just want to be able to read them inside our PTX block. Uh, these are comma separated lists, so you could have another um, output just up here if you wanted. Yeah, you could have as many as you want, whatever, doesn't matter. Just comma separated list. No, I've only got one in this example. Okay, but we've got two inputs, so uh, R, A double R one, and we also might pass uh, as read only, um, a double R two. And then we finish up with that to close the parentheses of the ASM keyword. Now if I run this, fingers crossed, what we should get is um, one added to two, and we'll go into a little bit more detail in just a second. Let's see if that's what we get first of all, or if I've made a mistake somewhere. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So the graphics card using a single thread on a machine that can run a thousand threads, we just added one and two together to produce the result three. Isn't that beautiful? All right, but what's going on here? What's going on here? Well, we specify these parameters just here and they get mapped inside the PTX block as registers. So this uh, ARR0 is the zeroth parameter. Uh, it gets mapped to register number percent zero. Yeah. Um, a double R one just here is the first parameter. You know, it's zero based counting. So A double R zero is zero. A double R one is the first parameter. Uh, that's going to get mapped to percent one. So if we had another variable up here, say we had uh, int i equals ninety or whatever, um, and we had i just here, um, this i just here would become percent one. Yeah, so I don't want you to get confused because the ARR index values happen to be the same as the register numbers. Um, this can be any variable in here. And the other uh, input just here, ARR2, would get mapped to register number percent two. So if you don't want to use registers in your PTX code, you could just use um, constants or literal values. So we could have 200 just here instead. So what's this going to do now? It's going to it's going to add i, which is percent. 1 and 90 to 200, uh, which is what, uh, uh, well actually yeah, we're not even reading ARR2 anymore, so we could get rid of that. Uh, this is just going to give us 290, I think. Let's just run it and see if I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, so the parameters just get mapped to sequential um, registers. Yeah, 290, good stuff. So if you wanted, you could actually put in um, multiple uh, of the multiple instances of exactly the same value. So we could say here a double R zero and um, write two different values to a double R zero by using percent zero and percent one uh, in our code. But you know, that's a stupid thing to do. Generally, you want to just pass each variable once. Yeah, if that makes any sense. Okay, so that's uh, how you put in a an assembly statement or a PTX statement. If you had multiple PTX statements, then you just do that. Yeah, you just put them all on separate little um, lines inside your code. I hope that makes a bit of sense. Let's just quickly step through this. Um, because there's an interesting slide here somewhere. 
Ah, it's this one. It's this one. Okay, so these are the constraints for the values that you're passing. So the R, as we saw in the code, means 32-bit integers, but if you want to pass other values, you've also got H for a half integer or 16-bit integer. You've got L for a 64-bit integer, F for a float, and D for a 64-bit float. So these over here in the final column, um, this is the names of them as they appear in your PTX code. Yeah, so right here we've got dot s32. Um, that's because we're using just here, 32-bit integers. Yeah, so I think that's about all that I wanted to say. If you're interested in uh, more PTX, I think it's a great assembly language, really. Um, it doesn't have the same backwards compatibility issues that uh, x86 has, so it's a lot cleaner, it's a lot easier to understand than x86. And uh, if you're interested in um, watching more on uh, how to program PTX, I'd be happy to make more vids. Just leave a comment below, and we'll see if we can get around to it. All right, but that's about all I want to say. So uh, I want you to have a really good day, and there's links to a bunch of things down in the video description. See you later. Have a good one.